Hi YouTube, welcome to EMI Academy 64-bit Linux assembly language tutorial series. This is the third tutorial and in the previous tutorial I showed you guys how to add three or more numbers using the registers. Now in this tutorial I will talk about memory variables, what they are and how to use them. So let's get started. Now let me open uh, the code from our previous tutorial. So let's go to desktop. In here it was the add.nasm so let's open it so this is the code from the previous tutorial now if you have watched my first tutorial in there I mentioned that uh, whenever we are writing an assembly language code we usually divide, div divide our code into two sections now one section this is the dot text section so this section in here what we do is we define the instructions that we want so in here, we had the instructions include things like moving data, adding it, shifting it, uh, decrementing the characters, uh, jumping, etc. But what if you want to declare variables? So in other programming languages or in high level programming languages, you can initialize and you can declare and initialize variables. For example, in C and C++, you can say something like, um, so let me go down in here, like int x is equal to, for example, one, two, three, or in Python, you can say something like s is equal to hello world. Um, so you can do that the same thing in assembly language. It's just that you can't do it um, in the same section of the code uh, as you are defining the instructions. And it is a good practice to separate your um, instructions from your variables. So in here, what we do is that we define another section and that section we call it the data section or the dot data section so the dot text section this is where we define our instructions things like moving data uh, things like uh, adding etc now in the data section this is where we define the memory variables or the variables this is where the data resides in the memory and you use it to retrieve contents from the memory and you can also use these memory variables to store data into the memory so it's also very useful in that case so uh, for this one let's first define a variable and let's say it's a uh, num1 and we say db and we say it's uh, it's equal to let's say 11 and let's also define another one let's call it string1 and uh, for this we say is equal to hollow so in here what we have is that we have created one variable called num1 and it holds 11 and then we have created another variable this is called a string one and we have uh, initialized it with hollow so it contains hollow now this db this is for bytes so we are saying store up to eight bits and uh, don't worry about this for now being uh, things that we have uh, in assembly language we have things like bytes which is 8 bits or 1 byte and then we can also have words which are 16 bits or 2 bytes we have double words which are 32 bits or 4 bytes then we have uh, so we have uh, double words and then we have quad words and then we have quad double quad words don't worry I will explain that in the next tutorial for this one just uh, think of this uh, just understand that this is DB stands for bytes so we are saying store this as a byte and also store this as byte. Now let's save this in here. And let's uh, convert it into an object file. So it's nasm1264 uh, add.nasm and then add.o. And then using the ld tool, let's convert this add object file into the executable add now you can see that there is our executable and we don't get any errors when you run it now let's do a gdb analysis of it so script ui add so let's set the disassembly flavor to intel and the breakpoint we want it to hit the start from the start we want to do analysis of it from the start so the breakpoint is from underscore start and let's run it let's lay out our assembly code by the way if you don't understand these commands i've explained all of that in detail in the first tutorial so you can watch them if you haven't and now let's do a registers as a layout as well so in here now in order to view the variables we have to use this command called info variables so this shows all the variables that are 
I'm using. So in here, you can see that these are the default ones. These last four ones, we define these two, num1 and string1. So what we want to do is we want to view the contents of these variables. So how do we do this? So x, xb. So this says show me a byte of, and then we specify the variable. Remember to include the ampersand in front of it. So in here we are saying show me a byte of num1. Now if I press enter, you can see that it says 0b. So we defined, so let here let me open this. Cat and add.nasm. So in here, db we said is equal to 11. So 11 and hex is b. So it's it says 0x, 0b. So the num1, it contains 0xb, which is 11. Now let's do the same with the string. So it's x, xb, and string 1. So you can see that it says 0x68. So 0x68 and ASCII is the code for H. So if you look up the ASCII table in hexadecimal, the 68 stands for H. Now we want to view the whole um, string. So in here, let me open this again once again. So if I do a cat add.nasm, you can see that it contains five characters. So there is H, there is E, and LLO. And at the end, we have a a string terminator or a null character which is zero zero now so let's read six bytes so in order to read six bytes you have to specify six xb so it will show me six bytes and then we type in the name of the variable which is a string one so in here 0x68 it is the hexadecimal ascii code for h and 65 it is e and then we have 6c and also 6c so these two are for double l's and then there is the 6f so this is the o and uh, as i said previously the null character which specifies the end of the string and the null character is 00, zero. so this is um, how you can declare and initialize memory variables and this is how you can view the contents of them byte by byte or the whole string now this is it for this tutorial guys, 